Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Tinkerboard 2, more specifically the Tinkerboard 2S. And the only difference between these two models is the S model has 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in. Now I've been waiting for the Tinkerboard 2 to release for a long time. I actually heard about this a year ago and hopefully it's not too late for the CPU they're using here because it is a bit older when you look at other single board computers that have been released in the meantime. So here it is. I mean, we basically have the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi. We got Gigabit Ethernet, three USB 3.2 ports. It also has a pre-installed Wi-Fi and Bluetooth M.2 card. And it also has a 3.2 USB Type-C port, which works in Display Alt Mode and OTG. So we can get video out of this. And all in all, we'll have HDMI and USB Type-C for video. So dual video out on the Tinkerboard 2. Along with the board itself, we're also going to receive our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna a manual, and this beefy boy heatsink here, because the CPU they're using in this does produce a lot of heat, and in order to keep those maximum clock speeds, it's going to need a cooler like this. It's going to attach to the CPU using this double-sided thermal tape, and uh, I do need to look at the instruction manual, because there's a little edge here, and I just want to make sure that I have this going on the correct way. But as you can see, when you compare it to the board, this little heatsink is massive, and it should keep this CPU nice and cool. So taking a look at the board, over here on this side, we have a 2.5 millimeter power input. This will take 12 volts to 19. We also have a full-size HDMI port. On the front here, gigabit ethernet, three USB 3.2 ports, and a single USB Type-C 2.4 that does do display out. 40 pin GPIO laid out just like the original Tinkerboard and the Raspberry Pi, so we got that covered. It does have a DSI and a CSI connector, plus we have this pre-installed M.2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. AC Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5.0. And just to give you an idea of how this heatsink sits on here, it is absolutely massive. So when it comes to the basic specs of the Tinkerboard 2 or the Tinkerboard 2S, for the CPU we have the Rockchip RK3399, Hexacore CPU, two Cortex-A72 cores running at 2 GHz, four Cortex-A53 cores running at 1.5. The GPU is the Mali T860 MP4 at 800 MHz. As for RAM, it's using dual channel LP DDR4 and they offer two models, two and four. Unfortunately, I could not find the four gigabyte model, so we have the two gigabyte model in this video. Since this is the S model, we do have 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage built into the board. Plus, it accepts a micro SD card for your operating system. 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, it doesn't come with a power supply, so you will have to source your own, but it'll work anywhere from 12 to 19 volts. And on their website, they're offering two different operating systems as of making this video, Debian and Android 10. And in this video, we're actually going to be testing out Android 10, but I do plan on making a couple more videos. The next one, we'll be testing out their Tinker OS Debian build. And if the guys over at Twister OS get a hold of one of these boards and get their operating system running on it, I'll definitely make a video then because that operating system works amazingly on these RK3399 boards. All right, so here we are. I've got Android 10 set up. I've installed a bunch of applications. I'll go ahead and open up IDA64 here. Our CPU is that 6-core RK3399 Mali T860 GPU. And this is running actually a newer security patch when it comes to these single board computers. This was from November 5th, 2020, and we're on Android 10. Now, when it comes to Android on a lot of these single board computers, they're not Google certified, so they do not come pre-installed with Google Play. You can sideload it using different methods, but nothing is working right now that I've previously used on other versions of Android. If this was running Android 9, I could get it up and running. But since it's running Android 10, I think they changed some stuff and uh, it just keeps crashing on me. So really what I had to do was just rely on sideloading APKs and third-party application stores like Aptoid and others. Now, since we don't have Google Play services, it's kind of hard to get a lot of this stuff up and running. Um, a lot of these games that I wanted to test out do rely on Google Play services, but I was able to get a few native Android games up and running. Uh, I've also got some emulators to test out and YouTube at 4K using YouTube Vanced. Now, first and foremost, I kind of wanted to check this thing out and see how it performs with 4K video playback natively. So I have a eight terabyte USB drive plugged in, and this is just my go-to test. Big Buck Bunny, 4K, 60 FPS. We're gonna use the built-in video player. Now, 
And this really isn't a high megabit video. This is actually 8.4 megabits per second. On that scroll down, I'm not sure if it's going to be noticeable in the video. It is a bit laggy. I mean, I can definitely see it stutter in a bit. And I know it's kind of hard to notice now, but the sound is way off. And this has really always been the case with these RK3399 boards and Android. But if you did want to go with, let's say, 1080p60, we shouldn't have any issues at all. I'll just show you this one. Just that initial load in, just to show you the difference. I mean, it's super smooth. You can just really tell that this is running at full speed. So next thing I wanted to test was a little bit of 4K YouTube video playback. And performance really isn't that bad. I was really surprised by this because in the past, testing out the RK3399 didn't net me great performance with 4K, at least 4K streaming. But uh, with this one here, let's go forward a bit, give it a second to buffer out. I'm on Ethernet right now. It actually does a really good job. Super surprised here. Every once in a while, you will see it fall on its face, and if you just wanted to alleviate that altogether, you can go ahead and go down to 1080p, but it does a decent job at 4K YouTube video playback. Another thing I always like to do with these boards is run some benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 5, and these scores aren't looking great at all. Single core, 176, multi, 533. And remember, I do have the big heat sink that came with the unit and a small fan attached, so we're not thermal throttling. I also ran 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, came in with an 800 for OpenGL 3.1 performance. I also tried to run the Antutu benchmark, but it kept crashing halfway through and there was really nothing I could do with it. I tried a couple different versions, but I just couldn't get it to work. So now I'm going to move over to some native Android games. We're going to start off light here with Brawl Stars. And with something like this, you definitely need on-screen controls, but this was one that I could get to work without Google Play services, and it's running fine. Next on the list, Minecraft Pocket Edition, and this is actually some of the best performance that I've seen out of this game with the RK3399. Given I had to drop the chunks down to 8 and turn fancy graphics off, but it is very playable like this. And finally, for native Android gaming, Real Racing 3, it's running great here, but this is a very well optimized game. I've been able to run this at full speed on cheaper $30 tablets, so I expected it to run pretty decently. Now, it's time to check out a little bit of emulation. We got some Dreamcast, PSP, and I even threw a GameCube game at this thing. First up, Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at the native resolution. If I upscale this specific game here, it does lag out a bit, but things like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 can go up to 1280 by 960 just fine. This is just one of the harder ones to emulate, but at the native res, it's running at full speed. Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP, Tekken 5, an easier one to emulate. We're at 2x resolution. And we're getting great performance. If I go up to 3 with this, it does drop down, so 2x is kind of the sweet spot there. But this doesn't mean that every PSP game is going to run at full speed. Because when we move over to Chains of Olympus, even with all the hacks on at 1x, we cannot get full speed out of it. If I turn on frame skip, this will run at about 27 FPS, but it's definitely not playable. And just because I know I'm going to have some people asking about it, I did want to test out GameCube. Soul Calibur 2, kind of a mid-range game to run. I tested with OpenGL, but what you're seeing right now is Vulcan, and performance is pretty horrible as you can see. So in the end, when it comes to the Tinkerboard 2 or the Tinkerboard S, I definitely wouldn't pick this up for Android. Now I will have another video coming up very soon using their build of Debian, but what I really want to see running on this is Twister OS. It's basically a modified version of ARMBN with a ton of tweaks for the RK3399. And I've had really good luck with that operating system on the Rock Pi, which uses the same chip. So as soon as the developers can get their hands on this board here and maybe port that over, 
I will be doing a video using Twister OS, but the next one you'll see on my channel is the official build of Tinker OS for the Tinkerboard 2S. And personally, I'm not expecting much out of it. I've never really had great luck with their stock operating systems. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I was really hoping for a little better performance out of this. I mean, the board itself is brand new, but the chip they're using has been out for a while, and there's been a lot of different iterations of Android out there. And I was really hoping that they were going to build an optimized version from the ground up specifically for this, but it looks like they're just building from source, and it's kind of the same performance as all of the other ones that I've tested. Now, if you're interested in seeing more from the Tinkerboard 2S, just keep an eye on the channel. I got a couple more videos coming up. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.